Well, praise the Lord, amen. We're so happy, amen, to be able to come to you again by the means of YouTube, amen, to share in the word of the Lord, amen. As you can see, amen, our topic for today is the courage to love, amen, the courage to love, amen. We all, Jesus said, by love would all men know that you are my disciples by the love that you have one to another, Amen. Let's go to our scripture today. Amen. In the book of 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, and starting at verse 1. I want to do this. 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, and starting at verse 1. Amen. I'm Give me a little time to get this set up amen and we're going to go off into the word of god amen all right amen second corinthians the fourth chapter and verse one it says therefore seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy we faint not but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Jesus, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants, for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, the courage to love, amen. Now, where does this fit in? Because Christ has commanded us to love. Uh, let me say this. There's absolutely no reason, amen, for or no need or reason or cause or justification for anyone to be lost because the word of God says in the book of Titus 2 and 11 that the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust, that we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Amen. So the Lord has made it available for all of us to be saved. Amen. No one has to no one is automatically lost. Amen. Because of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord. And when the Lord, Amen, uh finished his work on this earth, the Bible lets us know that he had already called 12 apostles, amen, and delivered unto them, amen, a charge before he left, amen, after Judas, amen, fell away. Uh, he gave the 11 apostles and those that would come afterwards, according to Ephesians 4 and 11, he gave the rest of them a charge to go into all the world and to preach the gospel to every creature and to go into all the world and teach all nations to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Now, when he did this, amen, this passed on to you and I today, amen, and then this is where Apostle Paul is writing and we're reading today, amen, where he says in the book of 2 Corinthians uh, 4 and 1, he gives the character of the ministry of Christ. He gives the character of the ministry and of the ministers that are to be called and are to fulfill the office of apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastors, teachers. We have a code of conduct that we are to abide by, amen, if we're going to please the Lord and if we're going to be in connection and unity and faith and harmony with the Lord. And this is what Paul is talking about here when he says, therefore, seeing we have this ministry, it's not ours. We've been granted, amen, stewardship of it. Uh, therefore, seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy, nobody earns the place in ministry, amen. It's all either you're called to do it or you're not called to do it. It can't be passed down, amen. It's not transferable, 
Amen. It's only by the Lord. Amen. As we have received mercy, let us faint not, but have renounced or disowned. Now, this gets into the characteristics of the ministry, but have renounced, disowned the hidden things of dishonesty. A minister must not be dishonest. Amen. Uh, Paul talks about it in 1 Timothy, the third chapter, that uh, a bishop must have a good report of them that are without. Uh, not walking in craftiness, slick slides, a uh, 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 slip of uh, Slight of tongue, using ambiguous words, amen. Jesus said, let your yea be yea and your nay be nay. For whatsoever cometh more than these, Jesus said, cometh of evil. Saints don't use play of words and preachers definitely don't use play of words in, in obedience to our Lord and Savior. Our yea must be yea and our nay must be nay. He said, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. This is why Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy 2 and 15 to study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of God. We did a video on uh, abstract interpretation. Uh, this is what has happened so many times through the years, amen. Ministers have just taken scriptures out of context and formed doctrines and, and said things that sound good but was not scripturally sound and it wasn't sound doctrine nor handling the word of God deceitfully he said but by manifestation of the truth showing the people the truth both in your life and in your message commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God we are called to be representatives of Jesus Christ we're called to be representatives of the Lord and as such amen we must conduct ourselves in the same manner that the Lord would and in a manner that would be pleasing to the Lord now let me say this amen so we will be clear there is no difference in saying you're gonna live holy and saying that you're gonna be like Jesus there shouldn't be any difference Amen. Because living holy means to be like Jesus. And to be like Jesus means to be holy. And so we must understand that whether we use, I just prefer to use the scriptural terminology when it says uh, be like Jesus and, 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 and that Christ is our example. Uh, let's go to that. Amen. First Peter, the second chapter and the uh, 21st verse. Amen. It says, for even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow, that ye should follow in his steps. So being holy means to be like Jesus. Being like Jesus is what it means to be holy. Uh, uh, we have denominations that say they're holiness. Nothing wrong with that. Amen. But if your holiness is not like Christ, then it's not holiness because we can't have holiness without Christ and we cannot have Christ without holiness. And here again in 1 Peter, the second chapter, amen, he describes to us what Christ is like, what it's like to be holy, what it means to be like Jesus. And he says, for even hereunto were ye called because Christ also suffered for us leaving us an example that we should follow, he should follow in his steps. Verse 22, who did no sin? Christ did not commit sin, and we've done vi many videos about what is sin. Sin is the transgression of God's law. There are the sins of omission and there are sins of commission. Sins of omission mean to not do something that Christ has commanded us to do, and sins of commission means to do something that the Lord has told us to Sins of omission mean to not do something that the Lord told us to do. And sins of commission means to do something that the Lord has told us not to do. And the Bible said that Jesus, if we're going to be like Jesus, if we're going to be holy, then it says, who did no sin, none, neither was guile found in his mouth. Amen. Neither was guile found in his mouth. Uh, uh, uh. 
who when he was reviled, he reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judged righteously. Let's look at that because when we say we're going to connect these two scriptures, in 2 Corinthians it says, uh, Wherefore, therefore, seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness. When you say craftiness, craftiness, if you look up gal, it means craftiness of words. It means to use words in a crafty or a sly or a cunning or a deceitful way. And the Bible says not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully. Uh, uh, then here in Peter, it says in, re in reference to Christ, it says who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. We cannot, Jesus said, let your yea be yea and your nay be nay for whatsoever cometh more than this cometh of evil. Amen. And so if we're going to be like Jesus, we have to be honest. We have to be forthcoming. We have to be straightforward. Amen. And, and this is what it means to be holy. Because if you're going to be like Jesus, then you got to be like that. When Jesus said a thing, it was exactly what he said. And it was the truth. Now, we're living in a day and time now where ministers have taken upon themselves the 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 right or the obligation or whatever you want to call it, the permission, the authorization to use words cunningly or to use words in slight. Amen. What really they're saying is not always true. And sadly, I found myself in that same uh, situation this past week. Amen. As I visited my home church there in Dallas. Amen. I've been around. Amen. Visiting other brothers. Uh, in the ministry, amen, and the Lord laid on our heart to just go in love, amen, and to uh, just uh, fellowship and show love with uh, our brethren there in full gospel holy temple there in Dallas, amen, and many, amen, we were just happy and uh, refreshed, amen, and blessed, amen, to see many of our brothers and sisters, amen, and I hope, amen, and prayers that they are still going on with the Lord and in the Lord, but sadly, amen, uh, our visit was, was used and taken advantage of, amen, given occasion, amen, for some things to be said that, are, that were not true, and uh, I have not said anything about it. I, after service, amen, I was recognized, and thank the Lord for that, and after service, I went on down, amen, and, and greeted some other brothers and sisters and greeted the pastor, Amen. Hugged. Amen. And we were just happy to be there. But uh, I hadn't said anything. And, and so, but if we deal, if we're going to be like Jesus, then we have to be honest. And we have to deal with things in an honest manner. Amen. And some things were said that were not true. And I, I hadn't said anything, giving a occasion, an opportunity. Maybe it was a slight. Maybe it was a mistake, but nothing has been forthcoming to correct it. So I must correct it today. Amen. And in the ministry and in the preaching of the word of God that morning, it was said that uh, the apostle had spoken with a minister in Beaumont about uh, not about stop telling the people to, to not live holy. Well, number one, that was false. Amen. I've never told anybody not to live holy. We must live holy. Be ye holy. First Peter 1, 15 and 16. Be ye holy for I am holy. And the Lord has commanded us to be holy. Uh, uh, what is that? Hebrews 12 and 14. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. This is where I think we have a problem with understanding. The scripture never talks about a doctrine of holiness, but it talks about following like Christ and what we are needing to do now is to get back to using scriptural terminology we've talked about we've talked about it as far as the uh rapture and the coming of the Lord the rapture is not a scriptural term amen and it's been interjected in the into the biblical discussion amen because there's another agenda amen and, and if, even though we want to say holiness or we want to say love when we talk about Jesus, we must be specific to say that we're talking about Jesus and 
So I've never said that anybody must, must, must not live older or don't have to live older. We did videos about sin. Amen. But uh, uh, it was it was perpetrated that, you know, uh, I'm, I'm telling people that they don't have to live holy. And that could not be further from the truth. Uh, also, it was said that uh, that he, had, he and I had talked and he had told me that I needed to stop telling people to live holy. Well, that I'm just going to have to say it. That was a lie because I'm, I, have, I haven't talked to him in many, many, many years. Amen. I did uh, after the death of uh, the founder of Full Gospel go to him and uh, uh, text him about, uh, you know, graduating him to the apostleship. And the Lord gave me a word for him on one other time. And both of these times I text him. We didn't talk. And, and and before last Sunday, I didn't, I hadn't talked with him and didn't talk with him Sunday. We just embraced and uh, greeted one another and I walked on out, amen. But he said that we had, he had talked to me and, and told me that I need to stop telling the people not to live holy and that there are few of us around and that we need to learn to work together. Well, we do, we can work together, but as long as we are going to handle words deceitfully and lie, uh, then we can't work together because we're not walking in the footsteps and commandments of Jesus Christ. Uh, we love one another. We, we can love one another. We should love one another, but we cannot start lying. Uh, I believe this happened in Scripture when the Bible says that Peter went in with Paul among the Gentiles and they were uh, eating and drinking, and when they came that were of the circumcision, the Bible said uh, Peter withdrew himself, and uh, Paul uh, withstood him, said, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed, because before certain came from the from the Hebrews, the Jews, he ate and drank with us, and yet when they came of the circumcision, uh, Peter withdrew himself in so much that Barnabas also was taken away and taken back with their dissimulation, which means hypocrisy. Amen. And Peter, Paul said, I withstood him to the face. So if we're going to love one another, then we must deal with things. No, we had not talked. Uh, no, that was not said to me. None of that was true. Amen. We all can walk in love, though. We can walk in love and we can come together and, and, and talk about the scriptures. I love I don't debate the scripture because we don't debate the word of God, but we can discuss the scripture. And with, in my videos, I've made it very plain where I stand. I believe in Jesus plus nothing. Amen. The Bible said there is no other name given unto heaven whereby we must be saved other than the name of Jesus. So we must follow Christ. And, and Jesus himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen. So we all must live according to the words of Christ. And when we say we're going to live according to the words of Christ, we're talking about living by all of the words of Christ. Let me go to this scripture here before we close this out. In the book of first, in the book of second uh, Timothy, the second chapter and the uh, 24th verse. And Paul here is writing to a young minister by the name of Timothy and encouraging both him and the saints of God. Because if you go back, amen, he talks about how some in the church, the faith had been overthrown by Hymenaeus and Philetus because they said that the, 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 the resurrection was already passed and overthrew the faith of some. And we don't need our faith overthrown. We just need to hear the word of God as it is written in context. And Paul here is writing, amen, to the saints of God and to believers then and now and he says in verse 20 he says in verse 24 and the servant of the lord must not strive but be gentle unto all men apt to teach patient in meekness and i'm, I'm only doing this video because it was done publicly i would have loved to have had to just talk to him face to face but in that it was perpetrated and, and the lie was perpetrated over the pulpit to all in the building and on on YouTube and everything, then we must deal with it as such. He said, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, if God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. 
uh, Paul said in another occasion of scripture, we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. All I am is for Christ. All I am is for truth. Amen. If I've heard, amen, I'm not above repenting, apologizing or whatever. Amen. And we can't do it by, in, if you, we can't sin in, 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 in public and, and then repent in private. Uh, scripture says, them that sin, he said, rebuke before all that the others may May, may 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 fear. Fear what? Fear the Lord. Amen. And we bear not the sword of God in vain. Uh, he says, uh, verse 26, he says, uh, well, let me read verse 25 again. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, peradventure God will give us repentance to the acknowledging of the truth and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. Amen. We must walk in love and we must walk in truth. Let me close this out. Amen. Uh, going back to our root scripture in 2 Corinthians 4 and 1. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced. And that's what I'm doing now. I'm renouncing the hidden things of dishonesty because I can't allow that lie to, 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 to live. Amen. Uh, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. So we have to walk in truth as ministers. And if anybody, as Peter said in 1 Peter 5 and 1, speaking to the elders, amen, that we must be an example unto the believers, an example of being like Christ, an example of being holy, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. Amen. I am available, amen, to, 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 to discuss and talk and pray with anybody. Amen. My phone number is 409 350 4380. Amen. Again, my phone number is 409 350 4380. Amen. We're available for anyone. Amen. I, I answer my phone. Amen. I don't hide. Amen. From the truth. Amen. But we must walk in love and we must walk in truth. Amen. In the sight of God and in the sight of men. Amen. We thank God for you. We hope, amen, that you continue to listen to these videos. Amen. And I want you to, every time we, we, we come on with a video, I exhort you, if you go back and look at our video, just about every time we come on, if not every time, we exhort you, get your Bible. Amen. Write these scriptures down. I exhort you not just to listen to me, but go back and read the chapters and the books and the verses that we read because, amen, we know that what we're saying is in the word of God. We must rightly divide the word of truth and we must walk according to the word of God, especially and definitely as ministers. Amen. So God bless you. Amen. We still love everybody. Amen. I love the apostle. I love the pastors, the bishops and everybody. But if we're going to stand for Jesus, we've got to stand for Christ. Amen. And be flat footed. Amen. And stand for the truth. And the church is the pillar and ground of the truth. God bless you to our next video.